What's up everybody? Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Dugo Art and um, today I'm going to be doing my very first tutorial and that's going to be the painting right here behind me. Um, I did this painting yesterday and I want to walk you through the step-by-step -step process of how I did this painting um, from the background all the way to the way I drew it out, everything. Um, I'm going to walk you through it. I've been getting this request a lot so stay tuned. I have my canvas up and I'm starting off by uh, just loading my paintbrush and just starting the background with uh, different colors and I really didn't have a plan going into it I knew I kind of wanted to have vertical lines um, for my design in the background I, I usually do different things all the time just depending on how I feel at the moment I don't really plan it too much honestly um, on how I do my backgrounds I kind of just go into it uh, just thinking like you know how do I feel how do I want to approach it and then I just go about doing it here's an up-close look um, how I load my brush I really just put the paint right onto the brush <laughs> and put it on the canvas um, that way I can kind of just control where it's where it's at I don't have to dip it into um, into the paint or anything like that I kind of just like to do that but that's really a personal preference um, if you want to dip your brush into the paint you can if you want to put the paint directly onto your canvas you can um, really it's just a personal preference for me and how I do it I just like to put the paint right on the brush so right now you still see me just um, loading my paintbrush and putting putting the paint to the canvas really I'm just picking out different colors that I like and how I feel that would go well with each other I don't even really clean my brush in between this um, I just put uh, one color on there and then I just put the next color on there so on and so forth and I do this because I like to let my colors blend sometimes so if I'm using a yellow and then say I pick the next color I want to use is red I know I might start creating some orange colors and that's kind of what I want so I just let that happen um, let it happen kind of freely and then say the next color I use after the red is a blue I know that red and blue is going to start creating purples so you want to be conscious that of what colors you use because um, if you don't clean your brush out and you just continue to put different colors on there it can get muddy if your colors are not blending well so you have to be conscious of what colors to blend so here I finished um, putting my background down so as you can see here um, these are some of the colors I chose was um, just it was really random just kind of how I felt and how I just went with the flow as you can see in my brush right here I have all the, all the different colors on there because I just you know um, never clean my brush but moving on here I am starting to sketch out the face um, I usually use a muse to uh, sketch it out and I would re do a reference from a photo or an image or of, a, of something that I like but this time I actually just kind of want to freestyle it and just kind of go for it without really looking at anything and so that way I can kind of just create something from my head so I'm just sketching out with a pencil um, very rough right now and then now I'm taking a sharpie um, after I did the full sketch of how I wanted to look with the pencil I'm taking a sharpie and just going over my lines and I'm just doing this because I wanted to make sure I see everything when I start painting and I know I'm gonna do just black paint with the um with the actual face so i knew with the sharpie after you do the black paint it's not going to really show up if you did plan on using just lighter colors or whatever the case may be you might not want to use a sharpie you might just want to just stick with the pencil outline so that way that sharpie doesn't um, see through see through your paint because i know some colors you can i mean if you build your layers you can cover it up but with with lighter colors you still that sharpie might come through so if you want to use also like a paint marker, um, something like that, I usually use like a paint marker as well, but I just had a Sharpie right next to me and I like, like just use a Sharpie because I know I was going to use black anyway. So 
so I'm just uh, tracing out basically what I drew out earlier and as you can see it's just a real not really a detailed sketch it's just really a simple outline of kind of what I want to paint and then I just do more of the details as I start to paint it in so now I'm coming in with my black and I don't really use any uh, like expensive brushes so I'm not going to recommend like what type of brushes to use just I feel like use what you're comfortable with of course if I'm doing the smaller lot outlines and more details I'm gonna use smaller brushes if I want to do you know larger areas I'm gonna use larger brushes and things like that but really I, I use like some cheaper brushes from Michaels or Hobby Lobby I don't really use expensive brushes for the type of work that I do if I was doing more oil paintings and um, or more realistic hyper realistic or detailed work I probably would invest in more expensive brushes but for what I do I like to create you know a lot of brush strokes and just be kind of loose and free with the way I paint so cheaper brushes work fine so going into this um, I'm gonna start talking about the way I approach the paintings when I do this um, just the black versions of like faces the way I paint over the color um, I would use like when I first load the brush with the paint I will make sure I hit the areas that I want to be completely black because when that brush is first loaded of course it's gonna be you know uh, concentrated and as my brush starts to dry I will start hitting the areas where I don't I want it to be more of a gradient or more of a shadow and not completely dark so I, it's kind of like a dry brush technique I'm not sure if that's like a technical term for it but that's kind of what I call it um, so I would paint areas like you see here I am using the um, black while it's still darker and then as it starts to dry off the brush is starting to dry be drier as you can see here I start hitting like some of the more fades see right now you can look it's not completely dark it's starting to kind of fade in because my brush is now dried out so that's how I approach doing the shading stuff like that um, there's different ways you can do it um, I know you can also dilute your uh, paint with water and have different gradient levels um, and then you can go hit your shadows with that lighter uh, kind of like water colored paint um, I do that sometimes as well but a lot of times I just dip straight into the black paint and that's all I use so I just go with this uh, approach of, you know, just using a drier brush when I want to create shadows. Apparently I was um, looking at something back there. But uh, as we go on, um, it's just going to continue for me, uh, me doing this. So I'm just going to let this roll a little bit and come back in a second.
Okay, now we're back. Um, I want to kind of explain this part here where I'm starting to sh add more of the shadows into the cheekbone area. As you can see, like I was saying before, I actually have a larger brush right now than the brush I was using. And um, I am touching the areas. You see, I'm touching the areas to the left where it's black first. And then I'm going into the cheek area while the brush is drier. And then I'm hitting those shadows with that dry brush. So that way I can, you see, I can go over it multiple times without it being too dark because the brush is dry. So you see every time I dip it, um, new paint onto the brush, I would touch an area where I know it's going to be dark, which is the area around where the hair is going to be. I knew that that area was going to be black. So I would touch those area with the paint first until the brush starts to dry out. Then I would go into the areas where I want the shadows with the dry brush. And if you don't want to touch the areas on your actual canvas, you can always just dip your brush and then just dry it out on a, a you know a piece of paper towel or something that you have on the side. Um, and then when you get the brush to where you want it, then start using it on the actual canvas on your painting. Um, I just do it on the canvas because I know I have those black areas. So there's no point in me you know, wasting too much paint by um, drying it out outside the canvas. I might as well do it on the canvas. So I am continuously um, just starting to shape out the face. And this is another point that I want to bring up when you're doing um, portraits is that you really want to study how the facial structure is so that way you can start making it look a little realistic if that's what you're going for. Even if not, if it's more of a cartoon style or whatever you're going for, you want to know the structure of how the face is and the bone structure and the way lighting is going to hit the face. Um, so that way you can understand where to put the shadows at. So you know like where to create the cheekbones or the, the structure around the eyes. There's different dips and you know things with our, with our face, the shadows that create under the nose and things like that. And also I always look at it like this where you wanna have a light source um, and you wanna, what I like to do is to create more of a dramatic feel to it I like to create my light source from certain angles onto the face so that way there's more harsh shadows on the face in certain areas. And what I mean by that is if you say you were to take a photo of your face and you put a light above your head, that light source is above, you know, above your head. So you will create shadows probably beneath your nose, on, under your bottom lip, things like that. So Imagine there is a light source on the face that you're painting and understand where the shadows are going to be casted from that light source. So like what I'm doing now is like, a, you know, a darker shadow under the nose. I'm going to have a darker shadow under the lips. Um, and that kind of creates more realistic approach. But um, I'm going to just let it continue to roll as I start filling in more of this hair. All right, now I'm, um, I'm doing the afro uh, on her now. And in this area, I knew I just wanted the hair to look kind of wild, uh, just be free. So I'm just literally like taking my brush any which way. I'm not really concerned too much about how clean it looks because I really want it to just be more of a wild flow. All right, now we're getting into my favorite part and that's the highlights. And here I just take um, white, which is, um, I'm using titanium white paint. 
and I am just going back in now and starting to highlight the piece. And this is really going to give it that depth and that look um, where it looks like there are different shapes, you know, of the face and it's not just flat. So here I'm just painting the eyes, of course, the eyes are white. And in this painting, I just chose to keep it like that and not paint in the rest of the eye. I just wanted to give it that look. You know, this is all depends on how you're feeling with your painting. You know, you just go for however you feel, you, you know, the mood that you want to create with your painting. Um, here I'm just bringing in the highlights on the nose. So this way, this looks like there's light shining on the nose and then it kind of creates that more of a real, real look to it. So I really do, do the same approach with this as I would do with um, the blacks. So I would take the, the brush and put it in the white and the spots I want it to be the, the brightest, I would hit first. And as my paintbrush starts to dry again, I will go into the other areas and kind of lightly hit them and they will kind of create a, a lighter tone to it and it's not so bright. Um, I put shadows in certain areas where I like to do it the most. Uh, the end of the nose, uh, above the lip, that kind of just gives it a look that there is light hitting the top of the lip. Um, I like to put, you know, highlights in the lip itself and then kind of make it look a little more glossy. Under the chin is a spot where you like to put highlight at so that way it kind of gives that shape of that chin. Um, and then I also like to put the highlights below the eyebrows and then a little bit above the eyebrows. And because a lot of our faces, there's a, it protrudes where the eyebrows are. And so light will reflect off of those areas. And then of course on the forehead, um, I put a little highlight usually on the forehead somewhere. And then most importantly, I think the cheekbones, that kind of gives you your total facial structure. So I put the highlights there. And um, like, I'm, like I said before, I hit the brightest spots first. And then as that brush starts to dry out, I just kind of keep you know fading it in, fading it in. And you can take the same approach, like I said before, too, with the black. You could dilute your white and make it lighter, and then you can hit areas like that. You can dilute it with water. Um, but me, I'm just going in with the straight paint, and I'm not really diluting it. See, right there, you can tell that my brush is drier, so that's why it's not going on as heavy. Um, here, I'm dipping it in, and these spots that I want to be brighter, I'm just putting you know, more paint onto it. So that's basically how I do my highlights as well. And the highlights is really what kind of makes your painting stand out. You don't want to go overboard with it. You just want to hit the areas that you know that light will reflect off of on the face. You don't want to just start, you know, putting it all over the place and then start making, <laughs> making it look crazy. So, and now here I'm just, I decided I kind of just wanted to give it a tribal look. You know, I'm just kind of freestyling it. I, just, I really didn't have a vision for it or whatever the case. I just knew I kind of wanted to do a tribal look. So once I had the face painted, I just thought, you know, what would look best. Um, if, you, if you're not comfortable doing this, you know, you can always look at references. There's plenty of photos on, you know, Instagram with different people. Uh, so if you want to get inspiration from something like that, definitely do that. But yeah, I'm just adding some designs to her face to kind of make it look more um, of the look I was going for. And yeah, that's, that's basically it for this part here with the highlights. One last part with the highlights, I'm just hitting the hair. Um, I'm being real free flowing and just letting it, you know, go wherever. I'm not being too careful about where I place the paint. I'm just hitting different spots just to, you know, give it a little highlight and depth. And last but not least, you gotta put that autograph, you gotta put that signature there. So um, this is my signature that I've been using for, uh, you know, a while now. And I just like to create a unique signature so that way people see that and automatically know who it is and associate your, your brand and your look to your paintings. 
and this is the overall painting. Alright guys, I hope y'all liked that tutorial um, and you was able to learn something from it. If you did, please like and subscribe to my channel. Um, I'm trying to make my page grow and I have a lot more content coming soon. And I appreciate y'all watching. Until next time, peace out.